The matter of faith. There have been men, many of them, who claim to be a new messiah. And tonight we're going to meet three of them, including one in the faraway Philippines who has amassed a flock, he says, numbers in the millions. Poor people who give what little they have to the man they believe is the second coming of Jesus. Bill Weir journeyed there to meet him. Throughout the Bible, prophets, angels, and Jesus himself all promised that the Son of God would return to create heaven on earth. And throughout the ages, billions of Christians have wondered when. But what if the second coming is here, now? There are a number of would-be messiahs who claim exactly that, and few are more physically convincing than a former Russian traffic cop named Sergei Torop. In the woods of rural Siberia, he is known as Vissarion, the teacher, and around 5,000 disciples live around him, growing their own food and feasting on his every word. And my whole body was trembling. The trembling is not coming again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's uh, uh, very emotional to me. Meanwhile, in London, David Shaler says he is the true Lord of Lords, but unlike Vissarion, no one believes him. That doesn't bother me because I was chosen by God. The former British intelligence agent says his body was filled with the spirit of Jesus in 2007, a conviction which intensifies on a visit to Jerusalem. We're in the Church of Holy Sepulchre, and this behind me is supposed to be the tomb of Christ. Well, I'm Christ, I'm not in the tomb, I'm not dead yet. But with no support, he lives in a squatter's camp outside London. My agreement with Jesus is I don't ask for money off people. If you're the Messiah, you shouldn't be asking for money, you should have faith that God will look after you. Prove to me that you are a son of God! But that is not a sentiment shared by Pastor Apollo Quibbeloy, the most successful of the world's self-labeled saviors. The official coming of the Son of God was in April 13, 2005. He was an obscure evangelist from the rural Philippines until 2005 when he announced that God had appointed him Christ on earth, his reward for a pure life. Sinful thoughts, uh, anger, lust, any of those things, you don't experience those on a daily basis? As a human being? Yes. I have all, already overcome all of those. There is no apocalypse in Kibbeloi's message, no rapture or final judgment. Instead, he preaches that he is the model of Christianity. And as more people follow his example, God will gradually turn the earth back into the Garden of Eden. Do you perform miracles? For me, the greatest miracle is the changing of that spirit within. But healing the sick, the manifestations oh, yes, of Jesus' yes. powers, you, you, you're able to we do have, that? We have, we have healing. You we are have healing. healing and miracles happening. After taking his place as the appointed son, Kibbeloi's ministry has exploded. He claims to reach six million followers with his satellite TV network, numerous publications, private jet, and personal helicopter. All the better to avoid the bumpy road and impoverished villages that lead to the walled compound he calls the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Here, is his five-bedroom home, surrounded by manicured gardens of imported grass. So this is your Garden of Eden? This is what we call the Garden of Eden Restored. <laughs> it's easy to see why this claim resonates in a country where 30 million endure crushing poverty with open hearts. This family lives just down the hill, next to the dump where Pastor Kibbeloi's garbage is burned. If you could be anything in the world, what would you want to be? Go to heaven. To them, heaven really could exist inside Kibbeloi's gates, and it's why hundreds line up to carry his parasol. All the workers who toil in the grinding heat of the kingdom are volunteers, here to glorify the Father. Do you get paid for this? Uh, Juju tells me he gets $40 a week to feed his family. Minimum wage. And like the rest of the kingdom, he's expected to give 10% back to Kibbeloi.
this may be the most beautiful spot in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And it's paid for by people who live on $2 a day. So how do you justify your, your lifestyle? I mean, your watch could probably feed 100 families for a month. If this is not God's will for me to have these things I have, yeah. you can take it away. It is God's will that, 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 that we follow. If it is God's will for us to live like this, you know, you can have a broken heart looking at me, but what can you do? But they get their understanding of the will of God from you. Yeah. And this, this nice young man wouldn't be holding this umbrella if he didn't believe the things you say. For us here, we see everything as a ministry. My talent is to preach. My talent is to be a leader. Not everyone can become a preacher or have been given a talent like me to go and lead the six million people. Right. But Jesus, when he, when he walked the earth, according to the Bible, uh, lived among lepers and prostitutes. I live among, among them. You have a private jet. I live among them. Before I had the private You're jet. You're in a walled compound with mansions. We, before this, I lived among the, these people. Like, for example, that jet that you're talking about. Do you know that in 1983, I had a revelation of that jet? That the Lord is going to give me that. Yeah. It is Him who gave me that. If it is not His will, how can I afford that? Well, <laughs> Kibaloy has been accused of kidnapping and brainwashing by the parents of at least one of his followers, but he was never charged. He insists that anyone is free to leave his flock and seal their fate for eternity. Will they go to hell? It's up to them. They know that. So that's your will, you know. If you want to go to hell, no one will stop you. If you want to go to heaven and follow this way, no one will stop you too. Come work with you. Yeah. There are three possibilities here. You are so, either the son of God, or you're delusional, or you're a very successful con man. I respect your point of view. But I resent what you said that uh, your followers will say, I'm a con man with a speaking ability that I've tried to con people. That is not who I am. I'm not trying to con people. I am speaking the truth. Skepticism is a cross all modern messiahs must bear. In Siberia, Vissarion has also been accused of mind control, but there's not enough evidence to try him. And David Shaler? Well, there are fewer legal headaches for prophets without followers, but still plenty of moments to bring a so-called Son of God back to Earth. Do you think you're Jesus? Sorry? Are you Jesus? I am Jesus, yes. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in Davao, Philippines. Can we have some quiet? No shortage of skeptics, no shortage of believers. The Second Coming premieres next Wednesday on the National Geographic Channel.